Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to be making a very fun like uh, campy uh, glam draggy boudoir robe. Um, when I went to DragCon last year I saw quite a few queens wearing these while they were strutting around and I knew that I wanted to make one myself. Um, so I'm really looking forward to tackling this project. I will be using a pattern. You certainly don't have to, I just happen to have one on hand. I'm going to walk you through all the steps and let's get started. For this project, I'll be using a sparkly organza and the Vogue V9218 pattern. Alright, so first things first, I do need to make a few changes to the pattern pieces. So I am just going to lightly hold up this front pattern piece to figure out how long I want the bottom of the robe to be and how long I want these sleeves to be. So I'm going to lightly hold this up and I want this to stop uh, for the bottom around my hip. So for me, that just happens to be like right around here. Um, so I'm just going to make a middle note of how much to take off the bottom of this. It's probably about 18 inches, 12 to 18 inches. Let's do a quick measure here. Yeah, so about 18 inches for me. And then we also want the sleeves to be about elbow length. Um, so again, I'm going to hold this up, see how much I need to take off of that arm, which will be quite a bit. Um, so probably about another foot to 18 inches. Let's measure that again. And that's going to give us the base for the top part of the robe. All right, so I will be removing roughly about a foot off of that sleeve. And then that way that gives us room to do a big bell on the sleeve at the bottom that will make it fully down to the wrist. Then I'm going to do two huge tiers of the chiffon on the bottom to give it a big billowy look. Um, so we don't want it to be too, too long. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut out these top pieces with the new edits. Uh, and shortening and lengthening this particular pattern is super, super easy. I'm just gonna fold up the part that I don't want to include. That way the pattern is intact if I ever wanna make a robe later on that's a normal length. So I'm just gonna fold that in and then fold the sleeve and then cut that out. That way everything's still intact and I get the appropriate size I need for this particular project without cutting the pattern itself. And just to make sure that the front and the back are going to be the same length, so I'm going to quickly just lay this on here and make sure that the bottom part and the sleeve are the same length. That way when we go to put it together later on, they're not different lengths for each other. All right, so now that we have the body cut out, I need to make the little loops that are gonna go on the sides of the robe to hold the tie. So I just took a little scrap here that was kind of more of a uniform shape. So I'm just gonna sew this together and then we're gonna be using this chopstick to turn it inside out. So let me go ahead and sew that. All right, so now that we have this sewn, we're gonna use this to turn this inside out and then that will be the loops for our robe. So I'm gonna, this is some really slippery fabric, so I'm really hoping that this is gonna work. We're gonna see how this goes. Use the pokey end. Okay, so I'm actually gonna put a tiny little piece of tape at the end of my chopstick here because this fabric is super duper slippery and I just need it to stick. So I'm just gonna stick that on there. That way you'll have a little bit more traction. And then I'm gonna start pushing this. There we go. Now we have a little tube that we can use for our ties. So now that this is done, I'm gonna go ahead and put the front and the back together, putting these on the sides so that the tie has somewhere to hang on to on the robe. Okay, so now that we have the body of our robe done, I'm gonna go ahead and cut off the pieces that I need for my sleeve cuffs. So these are about 16 inches around, um, and I want to have them be pretty fluffy. This fabric's not super duper wide, so what I'm gonna do is just cut two strips that are the, just the full width of the material. 
um, and make them about, I measured this and I think I need about six inches to go all the way down to my wrist with a little bit of seam allowance. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut two six inch strips from this fabric. Then what I'm going to do is do our basting stitch. If you've watched my last couple of tutorials, I've done this a couple of times. I'm gonna be doing the super, super high tension with the basting stitch. Hopefully that will start to gather things up for me. And then once I have them finished, I'll just hand gather them until they are the correct way, uh, size around for the sleeves. And then we're gonna go ahead and attach that. Um, and that will be the finished arms. All right, so now that I have these strips cut, I'm going to do two things to them. So I'm going to, first and foremost, going to use a rolled hem foot to finish what will be the cuff side of this piece. So if you've never used a rolled hem foot before, I highly recommend getting one just because they make your life so, so easy. Um, so it's a special foot that does the teensy little rolled hems that you would see on like a professional grade garment. Um, the really cool thing about it, it has like this little spirally thing that you just kind of feed the fabric into and it spins it and sews it at the same time. So I'm gonna pop this on my machine and finish the edges of these. And then on the other side, I'll be doing the gathering. So that will be the highest tension and the longest stitch length. That'll start to gather the fabric up as we sew it and then we'll hand gather the rest. Once you've sewn both edges of the cuff pieces, you'll want to gather up all the material, making sure that you measure periodically to make sure that the new cuff that you've sewn matches up with the sleeve of the robe. Okay, so now we have the cuffs of the robe sleeves done. And as I'm sure you've pro probably all just noticed, I'm wearing a completely different shirt. So today's a different day. When I originally went to do the rolled hem edge on these sleeves, this fabric was absolutely not having it. So I had to play around with the foot a little bit and ultimately this fabric, I don't know what it is about this fabric, it just does not work in that rolled hem foot. Maybe I'm just not doing it right. It has been over 10 years since I used a foot like that. So maybe that's why I was having the issues that I was having. So what I ended up doing instead of using the rolled hem is that I just very carefully folded over like a quarter inch of fabric around the finished edge of the sleeve. I just pressed it down and just like use my fingernail to press it in. And luckily that put a crease in the fabric that creased it enough that I could go through and just stitch it with a regular stitch. So that's what I did instead. I don't know what I'm gonna do now about finishing the entire outside edge of the robe because I was intending to use that rolled hem foot. So I'll probably end up doing the same technique that I used on here and just pressing everything down with my hands first and then sewing everything. So, but we'll get to that at the end. So these are the new little cuffs for the ends of the sleeves. So I'm gonna go ahead and put these on and then we'll move on to the bottom ruffles. All right, so now that we have the sleeves completely finished, it's now time to move on to the bottom ruffles, which I'm very, very excited about. And I'm gonna nerd out for a second because I'm really proud of the math that I did to figure out the measurements for this. So the measurements for the bottom of the robe itself, like the hip part, the bottom that we have right now, is about 58 inches. And I wanna do double for the first ruffle and then double for the second ruffle as well. So. What I did was I, well, first and foremost, each layer needs to be, for me, about 18 inches. So each person's gonna be different. I'm only about five feet, five foot five. Um, if you're super, super tall, you're gonna need it to be longer. But for me, I only needed each layer to be about 18 inches. So uh, for my particular fabric, it pretty much worked out that if you folded it in thirds, each piece was about 18 inches wide. So. I was able to lay my fabric into um, thirds and then cut the one size I needed for the first ruffle. So the, I have three strips here, all about 120 inches long. So the reason why I have three is the first one will be the first ruffle that attaches to the actual bottom of the rope because that will be double the amount that's on there. So when it's crumpled up, it will be the appropriate size. And then to double that one, I have two more strips. Those will have a seam that connect them and then they will be gathered to be attached to the second ruffle. So I was pretty proud of my math there. I saved quite a bit of fabric. So I ended up buying 10 yards for this because I had no idea how many yards it was going to take. And I probably have about 
four yards left over. So you could do this whole project with about five or six yards, depending on how tall you are. Um, so I was just very proud of my math that I did to get these little strips. So we're gonna be doing this the same way that I've been doing all the gathering. It'll be the highest tension and the highest stitch length. So I'll be gathering one side of one strip and then getting it to the correct size to attach it to the rope. Once that's attached, then I will combine the two remaining pieces and then gather that up to match the second ruffle. And then once that is the correct length, I'll attach that. I'm gonna do the stitches for this and do the hand gathering and then we'll attach this to the body of the rope. Once I started working on the large ruffles, I realized it would be a lot easier for me to make both of them and combine them first and then attach them to the robe later. This is by far the most time consuming part of the entire project, um, but it's well worth it. Uh, so just be super, super patient as it is quite a lot of yardage. Okay, so now that we have all the ruffles on and the robe is pretty much finished, other than finishing the edges, we gotta make a tie. I completely forgot we have to make a tie for it. So I went ahead and cut a six inch wide strip of material from my fabric. So I'm gonna make this pretty simple. I'm gonna fold this in half and I want the tips to be uh, pointed. So I will fold this and then just cut this diagonally like so and I'll do that on both ends and then other than finishing the edges we will be done so it's not necessarily that this project was difficult it's just this is probably the most material I've ever worked with on one project and it's just a lot so patience is key uh, I'm gonna finish this real quick and then we will do the grand reveal to sew the tie, I started at the tip of the diagonal cut that I made and sewed around the perimeter until the middle of the tie. I then flipped the tie over and repeated that step on the other side, making sure to leave a couple inch gap in the middle to flip the tie right sides out. Once you flip it, you can go ahead and close that gap and it's all done. and that is the finished look. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope that it inspired you to try something maybe a little bit out of your wheelhouse. This was definitely an interesting challenge. Again, not necessarily that it was super, super hard, but it's just a lot of yardage to work with and the gathering was just teensy bit overwhelming just because my table's a little bit too short for how much yardage that I had. Um, but I really, really love it and I think it's super fun and something that I could wear uh, in the summer or if I'm going to like a drag event, it could be very, very fun. So I hope that you enjoyed this video. Hope it inspired you. Um, and I've seen robes like this on sale on Etsy for like $200 and I got all the materials I needed for this for 40 bucks. So if you've seen this, something like this and you've wanted to try and make it yourself, I would definitely encourage you to try and do that. Uh, it was really fun and saved me quite a bit of money. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I post videos every single week. You can also find me on Instagram. Uh, my name is So Far From Ordinary, same as my channel. So I hope to see you there and I hope to see you on the next one. Bye.